Hey there, I'm Daniel, and, uh, well, it's, um, about 7.30. It's just sun just rose about half an hour ago. You can't really tell because it's so cloudy <laughs> that it's sunrise. But, uh, this morning I wanted to talk to you about math, and in particular, uh, why we should study it. It's, it's a question that I've gotten a, um, a good bit over the years. I've been teaching math for a while. And students will ask, especially when we get to trigonometric functions, they'll ask, why are we learning this? Why do I need to know this stuff? Am I ever going to use this information after this class? And unless they're going into some kind of an engineering field or uh, some other discipline that will require math on a daily basis, the answer is no. Like, you're probably never going to use this. But that's not why we study it. Um, and so, in an effort to answer questions like these, we'll often tell students that, well, the reason you have to study math is because it's really good mental exercise. It's like going to the gym. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's, it's, it's mental weightlifting, right? It's difficult. You learn intellectual virtues by doing this. Uh, it's, it's, it's good for you. You learn study habits. I think that that's dissatisfying to most students uh, because there are other ways of learning uh, good study habits and intellectual virtues and the mental disciplines and whatnot. And so telling them that trigonometric functions have something to do with you know, developing their minds is a little bit unsatisfying because they want there to be more than it just being, you know, a mental gym. <laughs> that's... <laughs> We want our study in math, because we put so much time and effort into studying math. We want it to be more than that. And the good news is, there is more to that answer. Uh, and the answer lies, the fuller answer, lies in the fact that mathematics is ultimately about beauty. And studying mathematics teaches us about our own minds and rationality and its limits. So I'll first talk about beauty, uh, and I'll do that by just raising the question, well, what does it mean for a thing to be beautiful? What are we, what, what are we talking about? Well, generally, when we talk about beauty, a thing is beautiful because of some kind of arrangement of its parts internally, right? So there's a kind of proportion governing the internal relations of its parts. Uh, and, and for this idea, you can think about how the Greeks thought about the beauty in the human body, right? So they had, um, some of their sculptors had developed a system of proportions um, where the different parts of the body needed to be certain sizes, right, relative to the other. And if you had all of these proportions in perfect harmony, then you were the ideal, beautiful human being, right? You were beautiful because you were ideal. Uh, and your whole body was governed by these proportions. Similarly, uh, in music, right, the difference between consonance and dissonance is a matter of proportion and ratio. So, in mathematics, it's no different. A lot of the beauty in math comes from observing the relationships between ideas and even how certain mathematical ideas function within themselves. And so again, we're thinking of beauty as something which is relational. We're relating this thing to something else, and in the comparison, in the proportions that exist there between these differing things, we find beauty. It's difficult uh, to teach students to see the beauty in mathematics, uh, especially because we tend to teach them algebra before geometry. And I think it's easier to teach students to see the beauty in math if we start with geometry. And the reason is that when we talk about beauty, we often expect something uh, that's accessible to the senses, right? Um, we talk about beautiful sights, beautiful sounds, beautiful smells. Um, it's less common for us to talk about beautiful ideas, although ideas certainly are beautiful. 
but in geometry we have something to look at, right? Because we have figures that we're drawing. And so it's a little bit easier, I think, to convince students uh, of this and to show them that math is beautiful in geometry. It's a little bit easier. And then after they begin to see this in geometry, then we, then we can apply some of these ideas to algebra. And when they come to algebra, they find it a little bit easier to begin to appreciate the beauty that we can discover in algebra. The other thing about math that I mentioned was that math teaches us about rationality. Here's what I mean. I don't know if you've, if you've ever thought about this, but mathematics is made up of pure concepts, right? Now, we have ideas that we're, at, that we're abstracting from the physical world, ideas like number and uh, the geometric shapes, like lines, right, uh, circles, etc. We abstract from the natural world, but we know that in the natural world, there are no such things as, you know, perfect lines or perfect circles. We understand that um, the number of things in the universe is finite, uh, but numbers themselves are infinite, right? It's because we've abstracted away from the material world. Which means that what math is, is we are using these abstractions from the material world, and we're handling them through logic in order to discover more truths. But all of these truths are abstract. And so we use abstractions to discover more abstract truths, which we then use to discover more abstract truths, because math builds on itself. It's cumulative knowledge. And the amazing thing about this is all of it's happening in our heads, right? And we're just dealing with concepts, exploring the relationships between concepts. And there are certain points at which uh, you can't push ideas really any further. And we begin to see how thin in some places rationality actually is. And by rationality, I mean just reasoning, right? Our reasoning abilities, our abilities to do logic. And there are certain things in mathematics which, at, at, at the end of the day, we have to just take on faith because we can't actually prove them. And that can be a little disconcerting, but it shows us the limits of what we can actually do. And because we're doing all of this within our own minds and we're dealing with concepts, in one sense, by studying mathematics, we're exploring the limitations of our own minds, right? Now, add to that the, the fact that we can take all of these concepts which we've developed independent of physical reality, okay, it's been developed, in, now we abstract from physical reality to get started, but then we develop these ideas independently of physical reality through the means of logic and whatnot, it's incredible that we can then go back and we can apply these ideas back onto physical reality and they map back onto physical reality perfectly. And you see this in physics, right? There's no reason why the universe should be able, or I should say, there's no reason that the universe would be, uh, or should be able to be described rationally uh, through mathematics, but it is, and that's amazing. It's incredible that uh, we can apply the math that we've done, again, independent of reality, we can make all kinds of mathematical discoveries and then map them back onto physical reality and we find that they work. And that truth, which is discovered independent of reality, can describe, I shouldn't say independent of reality because reality is bigger than what we can see, but independent of physical reality and we can map that back onto physical reality and it can describe physical reality. And that never ceases to amaze me. And the only explanation for that, I think, the only reasonable explanation, is that the universe is governed by intelligence. Uh, the, the universe is governed by the Word. Uh, I, I don't know how else one would explain that, but when we see these things in mathematics, right, the beauty of mathematics, the beauty of concepts and the way, the way that they relate to each other, the wonder of exploring the limits of our own minds 
through concepts uh, handled in logic. When we see the beauty in the fact that we can actually take these discoveries that we've made independent of physical reality, and yet th that truth corresponds with the truth of physical reality in an, a, in an amazing way. If we can show that to students, I think that they'll have a better appreciation for mathematics and they'll understand that it's something which is ultimately, like I said before, about the soul, uh, sensitizing the soul to beauty. It's about the formation of the soul, right? And those reasons, I think, are good reasons for studying math.